Hey everyone, I hope your day is going really, really well. Uh, I wanted to focus uh, this video on a couple of ways in which you can communicate more effectively during an interview and how becoming a little bit more aware in terms of how you speak, what your presence is like, can have a really, really tremendous impact on how effective you are in that kind of high stress scenario. Uh, so I'm going to offer a couple of tips, a couple of things to be aware of, and then a couple of ways to bring that into your everyday sort of preparation and awareness. So the first one sounds kind of obvious, volume. What you want to be aware of there, especially when it comes to an interview, is you need to really adjust your volume level for the room that you're in. A lot of times when we feel nervous, we feel anxious, what we do is we try to overcompensate. So you might go into a relatively small room, a relatively intimate gathering, and all of a sudden you're just like booming and you're just kind of blasting out. And you might think that that communicates confidence, but really not adjusting your volume level to the room, to the people that you're in, can really, really, really undercut the kind of the, the amount of confidence and the amount of strength that you're, that you're putting out there. So something to be aware of, adjust your volume for the room. Another thing. Tonality. So one thing a lot of people do, especially when they're feeling anxious or kind of on unstable footing, is they'll start using a single way of speaking, a single speaking pattern uh, to sort of phrase everything. So an easy example of this is someone who ends everything in something that sounds like a question. They're like, I, did, I uh, achieved a 30% gain. I went around here and I forged this partnership that they fall into this sort of kind of um, way of speaking that can really, really, really be damaging. So just one thing to be aware of there, which is, you know, especially if you're feeling nervous, you know, don't start falling into a single way, a single pattern. Be aware of that and start switching it up because that can really, really make a big difference. Another one, and this is something that I'm certainly guilty of all the time, nervous laughter and fillers. Fillers are like, um... Uh, like, uh, you know, we use that to kind of paper over those moments when we don't really know what to say. And that is something that I do all the time. What I found really, really helps with that is recording yourself. You know, recording yourself on video, recording yourself on audio, and then really just playing it back. I think you're going to be really, really surprised by how often that that creeps up. But, you know, honestly, when it comes to that filler stuff, you know, that's a habit where you want to start thinking about is moving it into a different habit where instead of sort of using these filler words and nervous laughter to paper it over, start having the confidence to just let a silence lie. You know, the most confident people out there, they know and they give themselves the time to pause. So you've got an idea. You're not really sure what the next thought is. Pause. Think about it. And then when you're ready, continue onwards. It's just a lot more confident and it just, weirdly enough, shows that you know what you're talking about a lot more clearly than someone who's just hustling and talking and talking and talking endlessly. So that's something to be aware of there. Number four, energy level. This is something that is so crucial because I don't care how experienced you are, how many credits you have under your belt, if you go into an interview and you're feeling negative, you're feeling drained, that is going to come out and that is going to impact everything else that you do. The opposite is also true. If you come in there with high energy, with high focus, with high enthusiasm, that is just going to pay off hugely in terms of everything else that you do. So what I would really recommend there is, this is something that I personally do, before I walk into a heavy meeting or a heavy interview or something that, 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 that's really going to tangibly move the ball forward, I always give myself a treat. So regardless of how something goes, I know that, for example, I'm a big mountain bike fan. I know that after this meeting, regardless if it goes great, regardless of if I totally tank it, I'm going out on my bike and I'm spending an hour just on a trail that I've always wanted to check out. Or I'm meeting up with my friend immediately afterwards and we're going to check out that bar that we've always wanted to go to. Give yourself a treat. Give yourself something good. Something really good that you value that's going to get you excited. And give that to yourself regardless of how a particular engagement goes. It's a little tip, but I honestly feel that that has helped me in so many high-stress situations because it makes me feel much more in control. So overall, 
be aware of your energy level, do whatever you need to do to get yourself into a good place and get yourself thinking from a point of view of, yeah, this thing is important, but my, my life isn't reliant on this. I'm going to be great. I'm going to be a rock star regardless of how this thing goes. That really is going to make a big difference. And finally, accents and regionalisms. Obviously, I am not saying that that, you know, if you have an accent, that's a part of who you are. That's a part of your identity. I'm not advocating changing that. But where it can come to play is starting to be aware of is my accent, are my regionalisms, are they impacting how easily I can communicate with others? Because if that's the case, then it really is something that you should, you know, consider addressing. And, you know, there's many things online, there's, there's many accent reduction courses, there's things that you can do to get your uh, way of communicating into a more neutral sort of, you know, uh, platform. And that's great. And I would honestly suggest that that is something to seriously consider if you feel that it's going to hamper you. The best people to get that feedback from are trusted friends, uh, colleagues, people who you know can give you an honest, you know, um, response in terms of that. Be honest with them. Take them out for a coffee. Take them out for dinner and say, hey, listen, how long did it take you? You know, out of all the time that, that I've known you, how long did it take you for you to really clearly understand me? How, how much of an adjustment was there? Because that is something to be aware of, you know, especially as you're moving up into the senior ranks and the executive ranks, you need to communicate clearly. You need to be effective in that way. There cannot be a gap where people are sort of looking at each other saying, what was that? What did he say? That needs to sort of be addressed. So just something to think about. So overall, things we were going over in this video, volume, adjust for the room. Tonality, be aware of falling into a certain speaking pattern and adjusting for that. Nervous laughter and fillers, start recording yourself and see if that's there. Energy level, get on a nice high positive level before you ever get in there because that's 75 to 80 percent of the game right there. And number five, accents and regionalisms, start thinking about how much of an impact that has and whether it's worth the effort and the time to control that and achieve a more neutral way of speaking. The ways in which you can really you know, address all of this, the most effective one, number one, start recording yourself all the time. If you have an interview coming up, you know, print out 15 to 20 interview questions that you'll probably be asked and just record yourself. Video is great, but audio is good too. Uh, start recording yourself uh, answering and talking or record a conversation and play it back. And I think you're going to be really, really, really surprised by what you really sound like. You know, I, I routinely will do these types of videos and things and I'm still surprised by, by the difference between how I thought I sounded and how I really do. So, so get in the habit of recording yourself. Sticky notes, that is something that I use all the time. If I have a call coming up or if I have a Skype video session coming up and I'm trying to work on a particular part of my communication style, then I'll just put a sticky note there that says, hey, stop saying um and like. Let it ride. Let a pause happen. Have the confidence to space it out. And having a visual thing there can really, really, really make a big difference there. And finally, ask trusted people who can give you an honest opinion. So probably like not your mom or dad, but someone that you know, someone who likes you, appreciates you, but can also be upfront with you. Start asking them for feedback on these areas because that is really, really valuable to really get a clear sense. So I hope that this has helped you to sort of start thinking about the way in which you communicate and how that sort of affects your presence in an interview setting. Uh, I would love to hear back from you guys. And if you haven't, I strongly recommend visiting one of my sites, UpgradeYourJob.com, where you can quickly sign up and get instant access to my six-point strategy for landing a six-figure job. There are some unbelievable, unbelievable expert tips that I guarantee you're not doing to sort of get you out of the whole sending your resume out and waiting, which is really a sucker's game, and using a customized, strong strategy for landing the job of your dreams. It happens every day. It happens to hustlers, and it happens to people who are willing to do things in a different way. So again, that site is UpgradeYourJob.com. Go there right now if you haven't. Sign up for my private client list. You'll get instant access to my six-point checklist, and I guarantee that that's going to be a big help to you. I uh, really appreciate your listening along on this. I hope that these tips have been helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.